Hi, I'm Alan Smith. On this YouTube episode, we're going to explore the natural state. I've had the good fortune to travel the world and see some pretty amazing places, but there's nothing quite like the natural beauty and cultural diversity of Arkansas. In this episode, we'll paddle the Mississippi, as well as go to a pepper farm and make some hot sauce. We'll also get a little artsy, both in a museum and out on the street. Okay, we're off to our first destination. You know, there are lots of ways to connect with nature, walking, running, biking, and even paddling. Just a short distance from Helena, Arkansas, along the Mississippi River is Buck Island. The public island has 900 acres of native forests and sand beaches. It's perfect for camping, swimming, bird watching, and nature photography. Buck Island is the anchor of a particular stretch of river that starts here and goes down to Greenville, Mississippi that is perhaps the wildest of the wild Lower Mississippi River. Saw a bunch of deer and uh, turtles and a uh, bobcat. Most of the land along the Mississippi River and the islands on the river are privately owned, which means that you don't have access to them. And that's part of the problem is that the Mississippi River is really owned by the elite. Only a few people have access to it. So Buck Island is a place that anyone is welcome to come to experience the beauty of the Mississippi River. It's a place where you can come boating, come bird watching, hiking. Um, there's so many opportunities for people to come and enjoy what the Mississippi River is like. We'll see a lot of warblers today. There are 50 of them and they all have a little bit of yellow in them. And the most remarkable one is a prothonotory warbler, which is brilliant yellow. And when you get out to these islands like Buck Island, um, oftentimes there's no one out there but you and the deer and the coyote and the birds. Brave work, me laddies, brave work, I say. It makes you feel like you're alive and connected to uh, everything around you. I have to tell you that paddling trip was absolutely amazing. And while you're there, there's so many other things to see in the Arkansas Delta. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the hardworking farmers in Arkansas. Here we have the rice capital of the world, along with lots of cotton and soybean production. Just west of Russellville in Arkansas's River Valley. I have to say, you'd be hard pressed to find a farm as unique as Subiaco Abbey. The Abbey has existed since 1878, relatively young compared to the medieval monasteries of Europe, but no less traditional. It's a Benedictine monastery, a sect that's known for its traditions of growing, cooking, and eating, my kind of sect. So let's meet Father Richard Walls. His love of the habanero pepper started in South America and followed him all the way to Arkansas. I'd say that Richard is probably the spiciest monk I know. Well, some people say that I am the spiciest monk that there is, but I don't think that's quite true. I, I'm sure somewhere there's somebody who is a little spicier than I am. Monk sauce originated in Belize in Central America. Subiaco had a foundation. We had a, a trying to start a new monastery, and I was one of the people assigned down there. Father Richard, those are absolutely beautiful. The color is stunning. I actually brought the seed for these, as you know, from, from Belize. Yeah, so this is that one, the one you brought back. So ultimately, this is the key ingredient to the famous monk sauce. Absolutely, <laughs> this, is, this is what makes it what it is. So here we are, Father Richard, revealing the secrets of the famous monk sauce, but not right. all the secrets. That, that's right. <laughs> yeah. but they'll get upset with me if I give out the exact recipe. There you go. But you know, we have to have these habaneros and they're beautiful. Absolutely. Now at home, I like to cut them so they don't blow up when they get hot. Exactly. Yeah. When you put them and start boiling them in the liquid, 
Yeah. They're, like, they're like balloons. They puff up, right. yeah. So I have cut up a, a, some onion here and put it in there. I'm going to uh, put some carrots in here. Of course, when you're working with, with peppers, particularly these really hot ones, these gloves are mighty That's handy, right. aren't That's they? Right. All you have to do is one time uh -huh. without the gloves and you'll, you'll never forget. Yeah, you'll remember it the next Happened to me, time. I rubbed my face and oh man. That's right. So far we've got peppers, <laughs> we've got onion, we've got some carrots and garlic and um, and What's now next? we're going to add a little salt and vinegar. Vinegar. Now we're ready to go on, onto the stove. All right, mm -hmm. so a uh, couple of questions. How long and, and what's the heat? What I do is I turn the heat up high at the beginning. And crank it up, there we go. And then when it starts to boil, I turn it down so it just simmers because I don't want to boil away a lot of the liquid. I see. But it probably will take about 20 minutes to get the carrots soft. So that's the indicator. If the carrots are soft, you're, you're there. Right. Okay. It really smells good. I've done this before, so I put a little cloth <laughs> over the top of it. I had that same accident yeah. occur. And if it's a little bit too thick, I can add a little vinegar to it. One thing you have to remember is that whenever it is hot like this, it's thinner than whenever it gets uh, cold. That's true, that's true. Mm. That's good, it's hot. <laughs> so there we go. Homemade monk sauce. Hot, tasty. Hot and tasty. Don't forget the tasty. I really enjoyed my time at Subiaco Abbey, and I want to thank Father Richard for sharing his recipe for monk sauce. I hope you've been inspired to plant a few peppers in your garden. Okay, next we head to Northwest Arkansas where the art scene is exploding. Perhaps the jewel of them all is the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art. A monument to American art, the museum in Bentonville permanently houses a collection spanning five centuries. There's also a library, art studio, gathering hall, restaurant, and three and a half miles of trails that wind the grounds giving access to the beautiful Ozark landscape. But one of the most extraordinary parts of the Crystal Bridges Museum complex is its architecture. Designed by internationally renowned architect Moshe Softy, the museum sits in a natural ravine, integrating two spring-fed ponds that are spanned by two signature bridge-like structures. As you move through the complex, you'll find that it flows from inwardly focused spaces, serving as galleries and classrooms, to other areas where there are dramatic openings and views of the surrounding landscape. Well, the beauty of the place is that we're on 120 acres of land, and so it's surrounded by forests, and it's surrounded by architecture. So when we started, opened the museum in 2011, architecture was an important piece, but when you're in the building, you actually see natural light uh, interacting with the art. So it is paintings and sculpture and the traditional thought about what it is, but there's also sense of place. And when you venture into nature, it's the world of nature comes alive. And while Crystal Bridges uses nature as a canvas for art, just down the road, you'll find a project that's bringing street art and murals to downtown Fort Smith. My name is Claire Kohlberg, and I'm the director of The Unexpected. And The Unexpected is produced by a nonprofit uh, called 646 Downtown, which was founded by Steve Clark. Steve, what is 646 Downtown? That's a great question. So 646 Downtown is a charitable organization that we founded to focus on the downtown area of Fort Smith to create vibrant experiences, opportunities for our citizens uh, to affect our local economy and our region and our state. How did you get the support from the community that you needed to get this public art display launched? We were thinking in terms of economic development. Mm. We were also thinking in terms of, regardless of how you think we got here as a species, mm -hmm. it's clear that we were built to respond to things of order, design, and beauty. I mean, the changes that have happened with the Unexpected Project have been huge for the downtown area. Uh, it's rejuvenated some of the older buildings that we've had uh, and just given them new life. 
we were very thoughtful about bringing world-class urban and contemporary artists because it was not just about bringing high quality art, but it was also about um, challenging perceptions not just the perceptions that people have of Arkansas um, globally, but also the perceptions that Arkansas and Fort Smith have of itself. Being Fort Smith natives and, and moving back 20 years later, it was pretty exciting to see such vibrant colors, great paintings, uh, fantastic murals, uh, installations. It ignited us to want to be in this area and live in this environment. So one of the inspirational things that occurred as a result of the Crystal Bridges Museum in Northwest Arkansas was clearly a conversation that's now beginning to occur about art in Arkansas, not just Northwest Arkansas. In Fort Smith, we're never gonna build, build a world-class museum like they have in Bentonville, but we can make this our own. We can make Fort Smith's version of that. We can make world-class art available to everyone uh, as a normal part of their day. Well, that wraps up this trip to the natural state. I'm sure we'll be back soon. If you'd like more information, check out Arkansas.com. There you'll find all kinds of events, uh, guides, places to eat, stay, etc. Check it out. And get out there and keep exploring. Until next time.